So let's start with the state of anti-aliasing. We need to understand where we are to figure out where we're going. And so games are, are still typically limited to a low fixed sample count. Uh, this is typically one sample per pixel. Uh, and we're operating at modest resolutions, so less than 4K or even at 4K. And the result of this is that primary surfaces are typically undersampled. And this causes unbounded error when materials, uh, geometry, or shading features fall within this fixed grid of samples. And we've all seen this. If you're in this room, this has been the bane of your existence probably uh, for many titles. So aliasing because of this shows up as jagged edges on hard geometry, spatial noise, flickering, uh, specular flickering, and it's, it's very obtrusive to your image. And so our goal then is to have something around 8x super sampled image quality without ghosting or blurring or other artifacts within a real-time budget. And this is very challenging. So the first thing we love to do is super sample the scene, render at a higher resolution or super sample within subpixels. Um, but the main problem, the reason why we don't do this is because the cost of doing so is literally proportional to the number of samples. But the quality that you get from doing that extra work only increases with the square root. And so this has other bad properties, like if you're using a deferred renderer, um, this doesn't really play nice. Um, there are other options that are like super sampling, but a little bit less costly, like multi-sampling. But even, even these can be too expensive for games with really nice materials um, or other bottlenecks. And there are many, many more uh, types of anti-aliasing techniques that have been presented and used uh, in games over the years. Uh, this is a very active area even today because this is a cornerstone problem for computer graphics. I'm not going to go over all of these. Many of you know these very well, or you wrote the paper, um, and so you could explain it to everyone better than I could. Um, but the current best practice that I'm seeing today is that people employ many of these strategies simultaneously. They can hand tune with artists' help. Uh, and ultimately, many games right now are relying on TAA or temporal anti-aliasing for that best bang for buck solution because it's not super expensive in the way that super sampling or multi sampling is. Uh, and you get a pretty nice integration over time. So, if we're using TAA all the time, why are we even here? Um, it's because TAA isn't perfect. So if you're from Eidos Montreal or Square, thank you very much for Deus Ex Mankind Divided. I, I really like this game. I played it a lot. Um, it uses or it has TAA, and it also has uh, multi-sampling for anti-aliasing options in the game, which I really like to see. And I'd like to use it as an example to show you uh, as a motivation, why we can't just use TAA and, and call it. Um, so the first one is that TAA will add substantial blurring to your image, uh, even with the best implementations. So here's a shot from uh, the game early on. And on the left, we have TAA. And on the right, we have TAA turned off. So there's no anti-aliasing. Uh, this is just your raw output. And if we zoom into the character's face, uh, you can see that the TAA version of the image is substantially blurrier. Um, specifically, the text on the background screen there, you can see on the right, it's crisp. Uh, you, it's pretty legible. You can read it, uh, particularly near the character's ear. Um, but with TAA, it gets blurred to the point where the small text is completely destroyed. Um, we also lose some specular in the character's eyes. The other main problem with TAA is ghosting. And so since we're using data from previous frames, those previous frames don't always have relevant information for the current frame if content has changed. So in this example, uh, there's a doorway that I'm looking at. And I crouch down, and I hit open, so the door is opening uh, left to right, or right to left. And so on the TAA side, 
um, you can see little areas where the door used to be over time. And I've kind of pointed them out here. For those of you in the back, this might be tough to see. But on the, the right side, without TAA, of course, the image is pristine. There, there's no temporal uh, integration happening, so there's no incorrect results here. So the blur and ghosting are the main problems that we have with TAA that we want to resolve. And, and this is also why the anti-aliasing problem is still open. So we want to redefine what anti-aliasing is and find a practical algorithm that's a hybrid of rasterization and now ray tracing, since we have this capability. So we've taken a step back uh, since we have these two fundamental tools at our disposal now on the GPU, and we've looked towards film, towards offline rendering, and a common theme in offline rendering is adaptive sample counts. Uh, they use this to resolve aliasing and bound the error in ways that we haven't yet been able to do with rasterization. And this isn't the, the newest, most magical idea. This has been thought of and proposed before using this hybrid. But previously, because of hardware architectures and APIs, it was very difficult to practically implement a ray raster hybrid for anti-aliasing. And so now that we have DXR and RTX uh, enabling full interoperability between ray and raster on the GPU, we can start to do a lot of the things that we wanted to do previously. But just having rays now doesn't solve all of our problems. And if we naively ray trace multiple times uh, per pixel, it's just still too expensive. So we need to be a bit more clever about how we use our rays. And instead, we want to focus on those pixels that will really benefit from the extra sampling and adaptive sampling that we can do with ray tracing. And we, we need to figure out where those pixels are. So our new goal is to harness the strengths of TAA, because even though it has artifacts, it's still very valuable. But we need to address its failures, really, with a simple solution. And our main goal for this project, too, was to work within the constraints of a conventional game engine. Because while a lot of research is very interesting and useful, we wanted something that game developers could go out and use right away, now that they have DXR and RTX. OK, so our solution uh, to this problem we call adaptive temporal anti-aliasing. And the core idea, as I've been building up to, is to efficiently combine ray and raster and leverage adaptive sampling within the context of temporal anti-aliasing. So since many engines already have TAA built in, we want to, to use that. So the first step is to run TAA. During the TAA pass, we compute a segmentation mask. And all this means is that we identify what AA method each pixel on the screen should use. Then we replace the post-failure TAA heuristics with adaptive ray trace supersampling. So many TAA implementations know that they're going to get ghosting and blurring and failing. And so they'll build in heuristics to clamp or reject temporal samples that would cause things like ghosting. So we're going to piggyback on those. But instead of just rejecting the samples and not having any anti-aliasing, we're going to ray trace. Next, we're going to use FXAA in areas of off-screen disocclusion. What this means is when you move the camera, temporal raster data from previous frames doesn't always exist at the edges. And those areas can be quite large with fast camera movements. And we don't want to dedicate rays to these areas because while rays are very fast on Turing, they're not free. And since the camera is moving quickly, these areas aren't perceptually as important. So we'll use a lighter weight solution like FXAA uh, because it, it's, it's quite fast and we can adaptively employ it in these areas once we've identified where they are in the segmentation. Finally, we'll composite and enjoy our new anti-aliasing. 